Welcome to Mind the Product. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Martin Erickson, although I'm better known as the big friendly giant. Now, I've been building products for over 20 years. I'm the co-founder of Mind the Product, the world's largest product community. I'm the co-author of a best-selling book on product leadership. And I'm an executive in residence at EQT, one of Europe's largest private equity and venture capital firms. Which means that I've had the privilege of working with, interviewing, and learning from some of the finest minds in product. And my side job is to go into startups and help them with some of those lessons to build better product teams and ultimately better businesses. And here I am introducing the world's largest product conference. We have over 1,700 people from 50 countries in the room. Now, I'm not telling you all of this to brag. <laughs> I'm telling you this so that you understand where I'm coming from when I say that I feel like an imposter almost every day. Imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. And I don't think that I'm alone. So put your hands up if you've ever felt this way in your work, in your life. Not at all surprised, because in all the conversations I have with other product people, this is a recurring theme. And a surprising number of the incredibly successful and talented speakers that have graced our stage have admitted to feeling the same way. Now, this is not unique to product people, but I do think that we suffer from it more than most. Because at the end of the day, we are generalists in a world full of specialists. Every single day, we work together with true experts in their domains, whether it's engineers, data scientists, designers, user researchers, and more. Of course, we're going to feel like the dumbest people in the room. But being the odd one out is also our biggest strength. So I say let's embrace the awkward. A few years ago on our San Francisco stage, Ken Norton, who's a partner at GV and before that led a slew of great products at Google, shared his belief that we need to think more like jazz musicians than orchestra conductors. He argued that there's a lot we can learn from how these musicians approach their craft. Because jazz is messy. The musicians invent as they play and they improvise with only the loosest of structure and let the music steer them. So to be a great jazz musician, you have to be uncomfortable. And last year in San Francisco, Janice Fraser, who's the chief product officer at Bionic, the former co-founder of Luxor, a director at Pivotal, and much, much more, and also our closing keynote today, shared that in order to innovate, we have to end our addiction to being right. Having all the answers actually blocks insights and perpetuates biases. So being the awkward one in the room, being the one asking all the questions, is actually more valuable than having all the answers. And a few years ago, on this very stage, Tim Harford, who is an behavioral economist and a columnist for the Financial Times argued that that frustration actually makes us more creative. He went on to describe some research by Kath Phillips at Northwestern University that illustrates how diversity of thought can lead to better decisions. Phillips gave people a multiple choice murder mystery problem and crucially gave everybody the same information. First, they were asked to solve the mystery by themselves. And fewer than 50% of people were able to get to the right answer. When they were put together in a team with four friends, the success rate went up, but only a little bit, to just over 50%. But when they were put together, three friends in a team with a complete stranger, something strange happened. 
because the success rate shot up to 75%. Now this really shouldn't have happened because nobody had any new information. But as Tim Harford said, the success rate went up just through the sheer awkwardness of dealing with a gooseberry in the room. Because when you don't know someone, you can't let lazy assumptions slide, and you have to be more cautious in how you phrase things. So it turns out, being awkward is really important. <laughs> it's so important and valuable because product management, designing software, even building hardware is all still so new. We forget how quickly everything has moved. We are all just figuring it out as we go. And that's also why it's so valuable to come together with our peers here at Mind the Product. Because coming together to hone our craft is more important than ever, precisely because any meaningful innovation intersects so many disciplines. That's why I love this community and I love this conference, because I'm still learning every single day about our challenging craft. And it's not just about the amazing speakers that you will see here on stage today. It's about the amazing conversations that you'll have out there as well, sharing lessons learned with your peers. We're all in the same boat here. We are all awkward imposters. And being an imposter is more important than ever because we know that we don't know everything. We are here to learn. We are here to disrupt the status quo and figure out new ways to do things. We are here to ask why. We are here to challenge assumptions and biases, to connect the dots, and ultimately to bridge the disciplines. And if that's not enough to convince you that you're not alone, I have one final story for you. Neil Gaiman is the best-selling and highly acclaimed author of Good Omens, Neverwhere, American Gods, Coraline, and many more. He is also the recipient of the Hugo, Nebula, and Bram Stoker Awards and the Newberry and Carnegie Medals. I'd never heard of those either, but suffice it to say, he's a pretty big deal. And he recently shared this story about his own imposter syndrome. Some years ago, he was invited to a gathering of great and good people, artists and scientists, writers and discoverers of things. And he felt that at any moment, they would realize that he didn't qualify to be there, among these people who had really done things. And on his second or third night there, he was standing at the back of the hall, listening to some musical entertainment, when he started talking to a very nice, polite, elderly gentleman about several things, including their shared first name. And then the gentleman pointed out to the hall of people and said words to the effect of, I just look at all of these people and I ask myself, what the heck am I doing here? They've made amazing things. I just went where I was sent. And Neil said, yes, Neil, but you were the first man on the moon. I think that counts for something. And he felt a little bit better. Because if Neil Armstrong feels like an imposter, maybe everybody does. And if the first man on the moon can feel like an imposter, maybe it's okay if we do too. So revel in your awkwardness, embrace your inner imposter, and welcome to a safe space full of equally inquiring and curious minds. Welcome to Mind the Product.